Well, hey everyone. Here I am, just out for my afternoon walk. Sorry, I'm a bit out of breath, but uh, that's how it goes at the moment. The view's really nice, though. It's nice to be back out on my feet. I've been out of action for a little bit at the moment. Uh, just poor health, really. I'm just out here hoping I don't get attacked by a fucking magpie. Anyway, sorry the lack of content recently. I've just been trying to uh, get back on my feet, honestly. Uh, anyway, let's get inside. See what's going on. Sorry about the swearing there. Uh, unfortunately, my capacity to defend myself or run away is really limited at the moment. So the magpies do have the upper hand. Uh, now, this video this week is a little bit different. I'm trying to show you how to build this shelving unit. It is very, very simple to do. Uh, I was getting a bit overrun with my hobby paints, and so I wanted to whip something up that I could uh, show you that was pretty simple. Uh, so hopefully you can follow along with this video. Uh, I will be back with some terrain really soon, as soon as my health is back to where it should be. Uh, this is just some footage I had from before I hurt myself. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's get stuck into it. Uh, thanks very much for joining me for the video. Uh, like and subscribe, all that shit. Let's go. Okay, so to put this all together, you'll just need a few lengths of each of these. For my build, I didn't need anything longer than 1200 mil, which is about four feet. You'll also need a backing sheet. For mine, I used a three mil plywood. I bought this as 800 by 1200 off the shelf, but as usual for something like this, it's actually 1220 by 810, so slightly oversized. But the corners are square and I don't want to trim anything, I don't have to, so I'll be building my shelving unit to actually fit the plywood measurements here. There's one other optional step down the track where I'll use a three mil trim to just edge some of the shelves on this project, but that's actually optional uh, and I will show you that later on down in the, uh, the video. I really want to stress here that this is really quite a simple build. So long as you can cross cut your boards to the lengths you need for your shelving and do some drilling and screwing, you should be able to whip something like this up without too much trouble. Honestly, don't be afraid to try something new like this. Uh, it really can open up some new ideas and new projects for you. The wider boards here, uh, the 90 mil, I'm using these as our frame and also as our inner supports. This will give us a couple of wider shelves in the project as I need them. And the narrower boards I had will be used for the dropper bottles, uh, which I'll show you shortly. Could use wider boards all around here, but uh, I want this to be pretty tidy. Now this shelf I'm putting in here is going to be a wide cross support. This is going to allow me to hold some of my Tamiya paints, uh, my larger bottles down the end, and there's some leftover space in the middle for more dropper bottle storage, as you can see. Uh, once I knew how big this shelf needed to be, I simply cut two upright supports using the wider boards at that length and uh, picked a distance from the left and right edge to place them. So uh, just ensuring I had enough room on the left for all the Tamiya paints and enough room on the right for the large bottles. So as you can see, I've cut a few small shelves here for the Tamiya paints. These are about 12 inches long or about 30 centimeters. And these will make good spaces for when we screw in these uh, upright supports you can see here. Now I haven't, uh, this is all still dry fitted at the moment. I am looking for some extra shelves on the side here, so I'm just sort of test measuring that out. I want to be able to put my brushes and wet palette and stuff, as you can see there. So I'm just partitioning off this side here with some of those 90 mil boards, and we're also going to start sort of dry fitting in our small shelves for our dropper bottles. Now I don't have a lot of footage for this, I'm sorry, there was an issue with the camera, uh, but I can show you how I measured this out. So basically I measured from that cross support we put in, the large shelf, and just using one of those boards on its side, as you can see there, I've just uh, used that as a spacer for these shelves all the way down. It did leave me with a slightly larger shelf at the bottom, uh, but that's perfect. I've got some larger primer bottles and stuff, as you can see there, so that worked out great. Once you get these all cut out and laid in, uh, it's going to be time for some standing. Uh, you're going to need to do a fair bit on this, depending on uh, what sort of finish you want to put on it. I'm just going to hit these really quickly with the orbital sander. Uh, if you want to do it by hand, that's fine as well. It shouldn't take too much, especially if you got these boards off the shelf. Uh, I think I used a 320 grit for this. Now for the outer frame, I've, I've pre-drilled and countersunk uh, some holes on the edges I need to screw in. 
Uh, and I'm also going to do that for the wider shelves. Uh, I'm going to do those wallets in place though. Uh, so as you can see, I'm just uh, putting those, uh, putting that pre-drill and countersinking those so that the screws go straight in. I'm using these uh, little clamps here to hold everything in place. You can use, you don't need to use clamps here. I've just got had these laying around. So I'm going to use a little bit of tight bond on these. It's only going to be on these corner joints that I'm going to be adding this glue in and uh, it's not really going to be covering uh, any of the other joints we do as I'll just be nailing most of those in. But all our corner joints, because we've pre-drilled them, we should be able to just line these up and uh, a little bit of glue and then we can just drop our screws straight in here. I'm doing this on my backing board, but again, it's not attached at this stage. This just gives me a nice flat surface to do this. Just want to quickly point out too that I had no plan for this when I started, so there's nothing sort of drawn out or no pre-measurements I had. I did start with a board that was about half the size of this, thinking that I would be able to, you know, quite simply uh, put this together and have a nice small shelf that would fit all my paints. But uh, once you sort of measure out your paints and you get an idea of how big they are and what sort of surface area they take up, you realize that uh, you actually do need something quite a bit bigger, which is why I have this uh, large shelf system <laughs> happening at the moment. Now this is all pretty simple. If you've got a cordless drill, a couple of little bits and some screws, and you should be able to do this no trouble. Again, I'm using those little uh, shelves I cut for the Tamiya paints as the spaces. That just helps everything hold together and, uh, you know, sort of uh, stay upright and square as I screw it all in. Uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble with this. Uh, it is it is basic woodwork, but uh, again, I mean, so long as you can cr cross cut your boards, you shouldn't have too much trouble making this sort of thing. Now I have cut a little spacer here uh, just to line up these shelves for the Tamiya. These ended up being around about, I think, 55 mil or just over, uh, or about two and a quarter inches or so. Uh, again, these little spacers will help me hold these shelves in place while I nail these in. I'll be doing this for all these small shelves. So all of the dropper bottom shelves will be just nailed in, uh, just as you can see here. I don't have footage for this. You've, you, you know, this is how it goes. I'll show you the first couple. Uh, you don't need to see me nail in 30 other nails. So uh, just basically using those spaces, just work your way through. Uh, when you get to the uh, dropper bottom shelves, uh, you want to make sure that you're using the 90 mil spacer because that will end up being a perfect space for your shelves to go in. Now I did sort of drop these little nail holes down a bit further because I do want to sand a little bit more. Uh, so I couldn't find my nail uh, punches. So if you've got yourself a, a rather large nail, you should be able to sit it on the head of those and just tap those down a little bit. That'll just sink them down into the timber and you know won't give you too much trouble when you're sanding uh, if you choose to do so again like I did. Now once you've got all this nailed together, you can go ahead and just nail this straight to your backing board. But as you can see here, I've just used these little edges, this little trim uh, to put a little lip on these small dropper bottle shelves. This will just help ever hold everything on there and, and hopefully prevent me from knocking too much stuff off there as I'm getting it. Now, if you do have the tools and the means and the resources to do this, go for it. I've got a bandsaw uh, at my disposal, so this uh, made this process extremely easy for me. Uh, I've got this uh, three mil red cedar, which looks really nice. It's a nice soft timber too, so it uh, you know, doesn't take much work to sand it. All I'm going to do here is just a little bit of glue and nailing of these so that they are flush on the bottom edge of each shelf and they should give me a little bit of a lip about two or three mil on the top edge of each shelf. Like I said that should hope, hopefully help hold some bottles uh, on the shelf rather than them slipping off. So this process is really easy, just a really thin amount of glue. You don't want too much squeezing out here, especially with this wood glue because it doesn't shrink or dry clear. So uh, you want to try and make this as clean as possible. What I tend to do is just uh, put a little bit of glue down and then just try and smear it all across so that I've got a nice thin layer everywhere. Again, just line the shot of these little trims up with the bottom edge of each shelf and a little bit of glue and hammer those in. It ends up looking really nice with this trim. You don't need it though. Again, it's optional. I don't expect everyone has uh, the resources uh, to do that. If you do choose to do it, you can just use the 3mm plywood. I would have used it if I uh, didn't have this uh, strips of timber available to me. 
and it will still turn out fine. So the strip of plywood will be a perfect little uh, substitute there for that uh, red timber I'm using. Again, give this a little bit of a sanding. I've sort of curved all my edges, so I used a bit of sandpaper and just sort of took each edge and sort of rounded it a little bit so I didn't have uh, hard corners on all of these shelves. When it came to putting the back on, I simply just uh, clamped it into place, threw a couple of screws into, into the corners. You do want to be a little bit careful when you're doing this, especially when you put screws or nails in. Be sure you know where your uh, shelves are on the other side, otherwise you will just start uh, popping holes in the back of your <laughs> backing there. Once you've got a, that all attached, as you can see, it's come up pretty good. Uh, I'm really happy with this. I've got the right spacing for all the bottles. Everything goes on as I want it to. And as you can see here, all finished up. It's turned out a treat. I'm really happy with this. I am actually going to attach this to the wall. So currently it's uh, just sitting on uh, sort of on my desk. Uh, but this turned out to be a perfect amount to fit everything on. I hope this video has been helpful for you. It was a lot of fun for me to do this. I did do this one just before I uh, really hurt myself. So I had this footage sitting around. I wasn't sure I was going to do a video for it, but at the end of the day, I don't have much other footage to use at the moment. I am hoping to get some terrain out shortly, so I do hope you stick around for that. If you haven't already, I'd love you to subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Appreciate all your support, guys. Take care and all the best.